The issue of Christ and God has been the greatest debate in Christian history. On one hand, you've got those who say that there's only one person in God. And on the other hand, you've got those who say that there's three persons in God. And those are the ones who believe in Trinity. And on the other hand, those are the ones who believe in either modalism or unitarianism. Unitarians say that only the Father is God and Yeshua is 100% human. In other words, they believe in Serinthas Gnosticism. Modalism, on the other hand, says that Yeshua is the Father and is the Holy Spirit, just like water can be ice and can be steam. It's one God who just appears in different modes or in different persons. In other words, this is Sabellius Gnosticism. They have their belief rooted in John 10, where Christ said that the Father and I are one. They also take this from John 14, when Philip asked, show us the Father. And Yeshua said that whoever sees him has seen the Father. The problem with modalism is when you start opening from the Bible right from the beginning in Genesis when God said, let us make men in our image. Now, if this was one person, how can he speak about us? Again, Yeshua prayed to the Father. He even said, let your will and not my will be done. Again, if it's one person, how can one person have different wills. The scripture also tells us that the Holy Spirit does not do anything of his own will, but that of Christ. In Matthew 24, we even learned previously that Christ himself does not even know when the end is going to come. Only the Father knows. So that cannot be one person. The word translated as God in our English Bible is translated from the Hebrew word Elohim. Now Elohim is a plural word of a singular word called Eloha. So if it's one, it's Eloha. So the English Bible is correct in calling God God instead of God because God is one, although there are three persons in God. Now we've already learned that Christ is God. And Philippians tells us that he is equal with God and he is in the form of God. Now, John 1 tells us that Yeshua is God who is seated near the Father because they are not one person. However, if you read in the King James, you are going to have problems because it is speaking about the only begotten son and it says nothing about Yeshua being God. Now you need to be very careful when you read the King James Version. There are many other good and better versions out there. Modern versions are far much better than the King James. Uh, it is the worst translation there is and I will do a special on the King James Bible when we discuss how did we receive the Bible much more later. But for now, we understand that the King James has got a tendency of adding into scripture. Just the same way it did in 1 John 5. All other versions like the ESV say, For there are three that testify, that is the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree. King James on the other hand says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. And it adds the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now where did King James get this thing from? John didn't write that. Why is King James adding these things? Let's continue. These three are one. You see now, this is why King James it's not a very good translation. 
in fact i believe that it does have some agenda which is gnostic to promote modernism to make god the father to be the same person as christ and to be the same person as the holy spirit which is not in the bible this is corruption which even isaac newton has criticized christianity for adding into the bible because of this very same verse that king james added and modified things the scriptures say that we must not add or subtract from the scriptures now because of that addition that's why many of you think you are christians but you're actually gnostics because you believe that the father is the same person as christ and christ is the same person as the holy spirit meanwhile there are three different persons so get a proper bible proper version you can still use king james but please make sure that you also have other versions to also verify the information it's not a wicked or too bad but it is not the best of translation i will explain on the other episode but for now let us come back to our topic now you may be asking yourself now if god is three persons how why does the bible say god is one that is a very good question now tell me why does the bible say that man and wife become one when they get married do they do they become one flesh i'm here my flesh is right here my wife is on the other side her flesh is right there with her we are not one person that is because one means unity so when you read scriptures like Deuteronomy 6 4 which says the Lord God is one that is translated from the Hebrew word Eckhart which means unity it also does mean one but it means unity you know like unity of one thought united so now that scripture means that your Lord God is united is whole he is united in thought is united in the way that he does things it does not mean one as if one person no now if you're still having a problem understanding these three persons in one god complex let me try to use one of my analogy to help you understand as we close one of my best ways i use to explain this god complex is that it is like the government our government has got three powers that is the legislature who make the laws and then you also have the judiciary whose job is to translate those laws and to conduct every activity in the courts and to make judgment according to the laws and then the third power is called the executive now many of us when we use the word government we are always referring to the executive the same way we use God when we only referring to the Father but Parliament is also government the same way the judiciary is also government the same way Jesus is also God and the Holy Spirit is also God Parliament is different is separated we even have got separation of powers principle in this government that the judiciary must be different from the executive and it must be separated from the legislature now that may be just a little bit slightly different with our god but at least it does make you understand that there's actually three different powers but one god three different powers but one government so i hope that helps you understand if you need further assistance or explanation just drop me a comment and i'll explain further for you you can also subscribe so that you may get even more understanding as we go along discussing this series in the next coming weeks 
So for me, Oscar Machado, I say, let the love you